We've seen that the MM1Q is uh, relatively simple to analyze and that the GG1Q is really quite hard to do, quite hard to analyze. But this intermediate Q called the MG1Q and this uh, Q has the arrival process being uh, Poisson, but the service process is general. And when the service process is general, we assume that we are told something about the service process. And so in particular, the service process will assume has a certain mean uh, uh, departure rate, and that could be given by mu, so mu is the mean of the service process, and which, which, need, not be, uh, which need not be Poisson. And also that we're given the coefficient of variation of the uh, uh, departure process, And uh, let's call that CS square using standard notation. So CS squared. And CS squared is given by the standard formula, which is it's the expected value of the service square of the service time distribution over the expected value of S, the whole square minus 1, which is just going to be the expected value of S square over mu square minus 1. So if we are given mu, which is the mean, and the coefficient of variation Cs squared, then we can actually compute two properties for the Mg1q. The first one is the uh, waiting time, the mean waiting time, which is capital T, And uh, this is given by t equals 1 over mu plus rho 1 plus cs square over 2 mu 1 minus rho. And so uh, what you see over here is the same kind of dependency on 1 over rho in the denominator that we saw in the mm1q. So as we have the service rate get, uh, sorry, the utilization get closer and closer to one, we will see the time, uh, waiting time shoot up, and which is why we'd like to keep this value of rho to be uh, lower than typically 0 0.7, even uh, for the MG1 case, similar to the MM1 case. And s the number of um, uh, members in the QN, the Q size is given by rho plus rho squared 1 plus cs squared over 2 1 minus uh, rho. And uh, this, of course, is actually derived from n equals lambda t, which is the uh, Little's law. So in fact, these two are closely related by means of Little's law, which of course continues to hold because of the uh, fact that it holds for all q's. So, uh, if you're, so if you are in a situation where the departure process is general, and if you're given mu and cs squared, then you can use these two formula to derive the quantities of interest. And these are also g called the Polachek-Kinchin formula, P-O-L-L-A-C-K. Kinchin, which is named after the two mathematicians. Uh, and uh, mo most people, including me, call it the PK formula because it's hard to pronounce. Um, now, there are sort of four cases of interest. Uh, for deterministic uh, uh, departure processes, when, the general, when you have the general departure function is equal to D for deterministic, then CS squared is equal to zero. CS equal to zero and CS squared is equal to zero because we actually have uh, no variability in the departure process at all. And so we get the, this value goes to zero and we just get uh, somewhat simpler pro uh, results for the, uh, M, uh, the deterministic case. Uh, when the CS square is less than one, then it turns out that the MM1 approximation, which can be made, is going to be too conservative. And so we have to be watching out for that. Whatever the results we get are going to be too conservative. When CS square approximately equals to one, then MM1 is a pretty good 
approximation because the C S square for a Poisson process is equal to one and so MN one is is a good approximation. And then when C S square is greater than one, then we are going to have uh, the need to explicitly model C S square very well. And uh, we and, and, and so we have to use the PK formula for that reason.